Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Finally getting around to talking about the banana trees, which are not really in focus. I think one of the most common questions I get during the fall and the winter months is how do I grow my bananas during the winter time or what's wrong with my banana? Or what do I need to do with it? So I'm gonna go ahead and address that right now. There are a few different ways you can keep them inside. There's actually, there's probably hundreds of different ways. People do all kinds of fun things to keep their bananas grown in their house during the winter months. But I'm just gonna cover like, I don't know, the broad three or four basic ways. And then I'm making this video under the assumption that if you're watching it, you probably already have your bananas. So it's not really a how to grow bananas. This is just what to do with them in the fall and in the winter time, right? Is that, a, is that a fair assumption? I hope so. All right, for starters, if you're growing your banana in a pot, you've had it, say, outdoors all summer long and you're ready to move it inside, and the question is, when do you want to do that and what do you need to do? So I'm moving a banana tree inside that's potted up and I wanna keep it growing all winter long, then I wanna move it in while it's still in active growth. And all that really means is that it needs to go in before the nighttime temperatures start to drop below 50. Below 50 is when active growth slows down and stops in bananas. Now, they don't really grow very quickly until temperatures are warmer, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Once I've noticed that those nighttime temperatures are starting to hit right around 50 degrees, maybe 55, even down to 45, somewhere in there, that's when I'm going to go ahead and take the plant, rinse it off really, really well, hose everything off the tops, the bottoms, the foliage, all of the sides of the pot, including the bottom, and then I will also sometimes come in and trim out all the little baby plants that are in the middle. Now, I do that just because it makes it a lot easier to water the plant when it's inside. If those are still there when I'm trying to give it a drink during the winter time, then sometimes you just end up having water pouring and spilling over that foliage, goes all over the place. I prefer just to get it out of there. And then it also helps encourage some more airflow around the plant, which can help reduce pests and things like that. And then when I have them in the house, I like to have them someplace where the temperatures are going to be ideally like the lowest 68 and then daytime temperatures if I can get them up to 75, that's ideal. I keep mine in a grow room that's very warm, very bright, and very humid, which isn't really applicable to most people. So I'm just talking about like average household conditions. 68, I know most people don't have their house up to 75, especially during the winter time, but you'll get more growth out of them the warmer the temperatures are. But as long as it's not dropping too cool, they'll be okay. And then I like to put them someplace very, very bright. Ideally a south facing window, a very, very, very bright location. As much light as you can get onto these, the better. You can use artificial lighting with the bananas, but you need a very bright, intense light, LED, compact fluorescent, whatever you prefer, it just needs to be bright follow the directions from the manufacturer as far as the distance to the foliage and usually those need to be on for a minimum of 10 hours a day with a banana or a kalakaja something like that i would probably have the lights on i mean up to 14 hours a day even bananas overall are just very thirsty plants so if i want to keep them growing and just sort of like as if they're a normal house plant then i would water these whenever the surface of the soil starts to dry out then that's when they need to be watered. It needs to be a deep watering. I wanna make sure that that water goes all the way through the pot and out the bottom. And then never let that pot sit in water. So if you have it in a drainage dish, make sure that there's pebbles, something in there to lift it up above the water so that when water comes rushing out the bottom, it's not in contact with that. Otherwise it'll keep wicking that up and things will stay a little bit too wet for too long. I try and reduce my fertilizing gradually. So uh, probably around October where I live, I'm in zone 6A, 6B, usually have our first frost around late October camera behave please so i'll still fertilize in october and in november but i will cut it back to a half strength and then after november i pretty much cut it out and that's because if a banana is being fertilized in the house then it's going to be told keep keep growing when the lighting's not telling it to do that so it'll etoliate it'll stretch out get really funky looking it's not great for the plant they're going to be growing actively technically when they're being grown as a house plant during the winter months but nothing like they would be if they were outdoors where temperatures were much more warm. They're just kind of hanging out and chilling. They'll throw out a few new leaves here and there, but just don't expect like explosive growth from them unless you have them in a very warm, brightly lit, heated area. Like I'm talking warm, over 75 degrees. Keeping the humidity up around the plant can be really useful. You can use a pebble tray under the plant. That's always something people like to default to. Humidifiers work really well, obviously. And then the kind of like jungle effect, right? You can surround your plant with other plants. That helps hold in moisture, but it's also the transpiration from the other plants. Transpiration meaning that's just the release of moisture through the
the foliage that happens all around it with all the other plants and then you have like a little humid area. For even growth it helps to rotate the plant bi-weekly just keep things from getting a little bit too wonky. With the banana if it's not like really really warm like I said over 75 you could probably get by with just rotating them like once a month because they're like I said they're probably not going to grow very quickly. Trim off any yellowing or dead foliage when they're being grown inside they don't tend to hold on to a ton of leaves at a time so don't be surprised if like pretty much every single time it throws out a new leaf then maybe a, one of the lower older leaves may die off or for maybe like every two or three leaves it throws out a lower leaf may die off something like that it's not the end of the world that's basically just the plant being like hey i don't really have what i need to sustain all of this so like we're just going to kind of keep things to a minimum that's just normal don't freak out about it it's not the end of the world sometimes even just moving them inside their leaves will start to kind of fall and droop and get kind of weird just from the location change the change in all their conditions can throw them off make them kind of unhappy again don't freak out about it just keep on moving forward as you normally would as long as you know it's not sitting in water or there's nothing wrong going on it's being taken care of properly that's probably just the plant throwing a little bit of a fit give it some time like within a couple weeks it should start throwing out some new leaves and you can cut the old ones off and a second option is to keep them cool so any space above 40 degrees but below 50 will do it's low light low water maybe cut off all the foliage when moving them into that new spot as well i usually will leave the foliage when i'm moving them into a cool location and just kind of let them decide what they want to do they'll usually shed most of it and like keep just whatever's newest coming out the top and then let it do its thing but if it's like really dark and really cool but it needs to be frost free then i would just cut the entire plant to like maybe four inches to eight inches above swell i'll talk more about that uh right now actually which is the forced dormancy bananas grow from a corm underground there's a lot of energy stored in there so they can be grown dormant meaning that they can just rest all winter long it doesn't have to stay growing actively and I personally find this is probably one of the easiest ways to overwinter bananas, but it's not possible for everybody because you have to have the right conditions for it. Eight, whether your banana's potted or maybe it's in the ground and you're like, okay, I don't really have a place to keep this, but I want to have it next year. Maybe you don't have a place in the house where you can keep it growing. Sometimes they take up a lot of space. This little dwarf guy here doesn't take up much space. I have lots of other bananas that are much, much bigger than this, but I'm just using this little guy right now because it's just kind of cute. Fits on camera perfectly, right? If I'm going to force a dormancy then what I will do is right around the time of the first frost or right before it generally when temperatures are between like I don't know 34 and 40 degrees Fahrenheit then I will go in just pretend this one's in the ground it's a large banana and uh, cut it anywhere like no lower than four inches and uh, I mean sometimes I'll leave like a foot or two of trunk on them it depends on the bananas but generally four to six inches eight inches somewhere in there that's how much trunk or technically pseudo stem is what that's called essentially you're just going to be digging up the roots in the stick before heavy frost it's a little bit of frost probably okay varies from banana to banana that some are much more cold sensitive than others most of them a little bit of frost isn't going to totally kill them particularly the corm which is underground and protected might take off the foliage all the green parts but not necessarily the roots the roots will probably be okay the reason i like to wait for there to be a cooler spell possibly even a frost when i'm forcing them to dormancy is it just kind of helps naturally push the plant into dormancy without me having to fully do it on my own and then all i gotta do is cut the plant back dig it up and uh, generally i'll throw them in like a one of those lawn bags the paper bags and put them someplace dark and cool and I don't touch them. Just let them chill until it's time to bring them back out. And I'll bring them back out when temperatures in the springtime, probably around March, when temperatures start to be steadily above 50 degrees. I should emphasize, it needs to be a frost-free location where that's stored during the winter time, and it needs to stay below 50 degrees. Because with bananas, technically anything over 50 degrees is when they're actively growing, right? And we don't really want them actively growing if they're going to be in a dark space with no light or very little light and no water the, the, the plant's just gonna die so a crawl space maybe an attic a garage it really just any space you have where that would fit and though it's pretty much unnecessary i do usually still like to check in on my plants when they're dormant like once a month i'll just pop the bag open make sure that there's not like a ton of pests or anything in there make sure that what's left of the pseudo stem isn't like so incredibly shriveled that there's just roots left if that starts to happen then sometimes i'll throw like a damp newspaper in there for like i don't know a day or two and pull it out because sometimes just having the ambient humidity is enough to give the plant a little bit of moisture because roots will take some moisture from the air i 
wouldn't leave that in there for too long so you can cause rot and mold all kinds of problems just check on it just make sure it's doing okay it should just look like a bunch of dirt with a little piece of banana trunk coming out of it a piece of banana trunk that is shriveling up and looking pretty bad that's what to expect when they're dormant and then lastly let's say you want to dig the plant up and grow it inside totally doable just requires some planning it might be too late by the time this video comes out for some people i'm so sorry the bananas in the ground you want to bring it in the house and keep it growing like a house plant all winter then ideally they need to be dug up and moved into a pot like uh, really four to six weeks before temperatures start to cool. What I mean by that is ideally temperatures at a minimum aren't dropping below 68 degrees Fahrenheit because the warmer the temperatures, the better the banana is going to do as far as adjusting into being into a pot. It'll give it some time to root out, grow into that pot before being moved into the house. If you don't have time to do that, maybe it just slipped your mind. Maybe you don't have a cool place to keep them to for them to be dormant. So if you're going to move it inside it, you think that you need to grow it as a house plant or grow it actively. Oh, sorry. My knee is bumping the tripod. If that's the case, you can still dig them up, throw them in a pot. When I do that, I usually cut a lot of the foliage off the top. I don't necessarily know if you need to do that. It's just kind of become forced habit because they tend to drop a lot of their foliage that'll droop, wilt, and throw a total fit once you cut the roots up and move them into a pot. So I usually just like get ahead of the game, cut those off and let it do its own thing. That way it's not trying to support those leaves when it needs to be rooting out. Doing that when it's being moved inside to less ideal growing conditions doesn't always work out though. That's why it's good to do that like a few weeks before you move the plant in. So it has time to adjust to being in a pot. Bananas are sturdy plants. This is a tiny one. It's not like gonna be something that's gonna be a big bother in the house, but most bananas are much bigger than this. This is like a super dwarf, I don't remember. It doesn't have a label on it. So it's a truly tiny little prince. One of those stays very small, but most of them will get much larger and maybe you don't have the floor space for that. You can just like cut those trunks back. Maybe your bananas are like 10 feet tall or something outdoors. You don't want to take a 10 foot tall plant inside. You can cut that trunk back like really 12 to 18 inches even. The pseudosem will be fine with it. It'll push out new foliage from down below. Over time, it, the where it's been cut, you'll start to see some browning along the trunk. Might want to pull that off when they're in the house because pests and things can hang out in there, but be gentle when doing it. They're more frail when they're kept inside. You don't want to damage them when you're removing the brown, the dead sheaths that are on that pseudo stem. All right, pests. The main thing with bananas are spider mites. Spider mites absolutely love banana trees. They just think they're delicious. Ways to help avoid having problems with spider mites is to have increased airflow around the plant and increased humidity. Although the problem with that is that if there's a lot of air moving around the plant, that tends to blow the humidity away, right? So that can make it a little bit more tricky. Maybe in a smaller room, a bathroom, something like that, it might be more easy to do because the humidity can be held in while still having a good amount of airflow. Those are things that spider mites don't like but those aren't the easiest conditions to create in the house, right? Check the plant regularly. If you start to notice signs of spider mites, then I like to take them to a sink, give them a really good rinse or to a shower and like get the tops of foliage, the bottoms, the whole thing, just like totally blast the plant with water and rinse it off heavily. Then I'll spray it down with an insecticidal soap and repeat that like weekly until I don't notice any more issues with the plant. And then if insecticidal soap's not doing the trick, then I'll move up to an oil like neem oil, peppermint oil, something like that. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot worst case scenarios is when you move to more hardcore things. That's all on y'all though. You gotta look into all that on your own. Always be careful, follow directions appropriately. Typically though, insecticidal soaps and insecticidal oils will handle spider mites just fine on their own. You just have to stay on top of it. And then just like with all the other ways, the four different ways you can grow them, move them outside when temperatures are steadily above 50 degrees. And I would acclimate them back into full sun. Even though bananas like a ton of light and hopefully they're getting a ton of light in the house, it's just not the same. The light that's in the house is not the same as the light that's outside. So the foliage can still scorch and kind of throw a bit of a fit. And then yes, that's also when you would resume fertilizing. Once they can be grown outside, go ahead and start fertilizing them again. This is also typically the ways that you can overwinter colocages in the house, elephant ears that is. And with the dormancy method, the same thing would apply to cannas, Again, colocages, elephant ears, kale lilies, percumat, let's to fully the siam, gingers. There are a lot of plants that would fall into that category with the forced dormancy and how to keep them during the winter months. Yeah, that's the gist of it though. Y'all get it. Hopefully one of those methods is suitable for what you're looking for. And 
there's something useful there for you. Okay, that's all. Comments, questions, everything down below, or just say hi. I love talking to everybody. I have all my social media linked down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. It's a good place to get a hold of me. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, you can give the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel, so thank you. I appreciate it. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload them multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always and most importantly everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye!